Hey guys, it's Mike Blackburn with add-ons. I'm going to show you uh, today how to make a polygon. First of all, polygons can be used for several different things. Mainly, they're used for pricing, for zone pricing, point-to-point uh, -point pricing. Uh, this makes much more sense than doing cities or zip codes, just because zip codes can be long, cities can be really big. Um, this allows you to dial in your pricing to specific areas on a map. We can also use polygons to block pricing, block automatic quoting. So if there's a certain area you don't want to go in in your, um, in your city, you can draw a polygon and use that. Uh, you can also use polygons to create selection factors. So if you want to drive up a price if it enters in a certain area, or if you want to say, I only want to accept pricing in my general operating area, you can use a polygon for that. So I'm just going to keep it really simple today. We're just going to look at how to create a polygon. You're going to go into lead quote. You're going to go to rate management. And then we're going to go to regions. So regions will bring you to all your regions. And you can add zip codes, of course. You can add cities, you can add points of interest, but again, we're just looking at polygons. So we're going to go over to Find Batch, Add Regions, and then go to Import from Google My Maps. Right here, we've got some really basic instructions that will take you through the steps, but again, I'm going to show this to you. So we're going to go to Google My Maps. If you're not signed into Google, go ahead and sign into Google at this point, and you're going to create a new map. So you want to be pretty specific about these. That way, if you start generating many different maps or uh, different polygons, when you go to debug or, or make a rule, you know exactly what the polygon is named and what that means to you. I don't ever want to see polygon 1, polygon 2, polygon 3. You know, That way, if you need to know, it's North Tampa, Central Tampa, East Tampa, whatever. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and name my map here, and let's zoom into an operating area. Just take, let's just take Washington, for example. So right here, we've got a toolbar, and this is draw a line. This is the tool we're going to be using. So you're going to draw a line right here. Now, every click is going to make a new point for a polygon. And when you've completed your polygon, it needs to shade out gray, and that'll give you an ability to name it. So we'll go ahead and name our polygon right here, and that's good. So if you don't fully complete a polygon, it'll be a line instead. And we cannot price or use anything with a line. It needs to be a shaded polygon. So from here, we're going to add a new one. Now, this is where becomes important to be pretty exact with these because if you have a gap in between two polygons and you have an address that winds up in between two polygons and it doesn't match either one then we're going to fall back to your rate sheets which are usually either hour or by mile pricing so you want to be pretty exact on your polygons Now, you can always edit a polygon after you make it. You can click the whole thing, and you can drag it. You can pull in a certain uh, point or pull it out. That way, you can reshape it. Um, you don't want polygons to overlap. As far as pricing polygons go, you can't have them overlapping. Again, if we find a point, and it's in between two polygons, or if two polygons match it, then we can't price it because it's going to be shared in between two polygons. So you want to be pretty exact in these. So again, if you have areas that you want to price for just pricing zones, this is how you would do it. Now, if I mentioned earlier that you can have operating areas or blocking policies. Now these, you can overlap. 
because we're using them not just for pricing. If I only want to service trips, automatic pricing within this general area, I can make a big polygon and say, and then use that later in an auto blocking policy. So if I say anything that resides out, any trips that reside either start or finish outside of this operating area, I can drive that to a quote request instead of an auto price. You know, that way, if you're operating out of Washington, D.C., and you're getting trip requests in New York, you might want to call an affiliate or something like that in New York rather than price it automatically from your home base in Washington. So we can also do a no-go zone or something like that. So if I don't ever want to go into Brandywine, Brandywine is a very nice area, but, you know, we could say... This is where it becomes important to name them properly again. So you want to name them properly. That way, when you put them to use, you know what they are. You know, I know that these are pricing zones. I know this is my operating area. I know this is a no-go zone. So once I get done, you can add as many of these as you want. And we're going to want to go ahead and click share. And we're going to enable link sharing. And we're going to go to drive sharing. So this defaults to anyone on the internet with the link can view it. I want you to change this to edit. That way, if you need to make changes in your LQC add-ons account, we can actually update the Google My Map from add-ons. So we'll copy this link and we'll hit done. And then we're going to go back to your LQC regions map importer. We're going to go ahead and paste this link right here and we're going to import all zones. Now I have a lot of test data in here so you're going to see a lot more than what we just did here. But if I get us way down to the bottom here This is going to be my polygons that I just created. Operating area, Bethesda, whatever. And so we can now put these into use for pricing or for selection factors, for auto blocking, or, or for price adjustments from here. So again, this is how you import polygons. This is how you create polygons. Um, I will go ahead and we'll make another video for doing your pricing for those polygons next. I appreciate your time. As always, we can be reached at 703-794-6100 or support at artistmode.com. Thank you so much. Good luck.